Hello and welcome to Chinwag with the Horsemen. I'm Andrew. I'm Avery. I'm James. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about uh, video games. This is episode three of the podcast. We've been playing video games together since we were kids. You know, 20, 20 plus years we're talking, you know, that we've been hanging out playing video games. And we were thinking about some of some of our misadventures, mishaps in the in the world of video games. And, you know, when we're talking about this, the one that, that comes to mind for me is always going to be, um, we were talking earlier about it, when we were in college playing Left 4 Dead and uh, my college roommate, or I'm trying to remember now who, who was, someone died right outside of the uh, the shelter and James was playing with him. No, Avery was playing. It was Casey that died, right? Casey died, the fourth horseman, Casey, who's not with us right now died right outside of the shelter and he's like, Avery, you know, come give me a health pack, come save me. And Avery had the reaction of all time, like the most realistic reaction in a video game. And he said, I'm not coming out there. <laughs> That's the most realistic reaction I think I can remember in a video game. Well let, let's put some context to this. We was playing on hardcore. It was probably twelve thirty at night. Or later. Uh, the the tank was still out there. There was a smoker, there was a uh, hunter, there was a blob. Like, Casey was not in the best situation. <laughs> I was low on ammo. I didn't have enough health. And, you know, to, to make sure we went on to the next phase, <laughs> if Casey died, I knew he would be right there with me so we could go to fight the other one. And the name of the game is Left for Dead. And you literally... Left him for dead. I was not I mean, going back out there. If, if my memory serves me correct, you guys were both sprinting to the safe zone. You made it in the safe zone and then shut the door. <laughs> Casey tries to open the door, gets attacked, and is then pleading for you to help him. And you just said, no, nope, not my problem. <laughs> I'm not, not going problem. out there for anything. Ain't happening. Good well, luck, Casey. Well, Have fun. I'm also, so, I'm also going to point out that I'm pretty sure there was a witch like right on the other side of that door too. It was a lot. There was and, a lot going on. And I, I saved him from one smoker from the shelter, but that other one took him around the corner. I had no shot, so I was like, nope. <laughs> and now I will remember as well a time when you helped Casey uh, in a video game that I think has lived in our in our collective memory. Uh, we were playing Portal one time. I was playing Portal and Casey and me were trying to figure out this one like tricky part of the level and we kept trying it over and over and over and Avery was just like you ain't never gonna get it that's dumb you can't figure that out that's yeah not he, how it's done. he kept shooting down the, the solutions they were discussing and, and it was no that's not gonna work so it works <laughs> the solution works Avery says honestly Avery says with a straight face I'm glad I told you how to finish that level and Casey, like, throws the controller down, lifts both arms into the air, and goes, Avery is the king. And that's the, that's the title of a great podcast episode right there. Avery is the king. Let me, let me, all, okay, while we are talking about this, as you guys keep bringing up shortcomings of mine, the, these guys went to the same college together. And in their free time, and I mean their free time that they, you know, was actually going to class, they had time enough to create a certain website just to cut my face out and put on historical themes. Sometimes it was Indiana Jones, but yeah, we put you in a lot of different scenarios. So you, you enjoyed your fan page. The fan page is still up. I am not a member of my fan page. <laughs> you don't even have a Facebook. Yeah, uh, yeah I do. But I'm just not a member of my fan page. Anyone who's interested can probably find it by just searching Aberry, and I'm sure it'll come up. It'll be there. Please Everybody don't. needs to go like and share uh, <laughs> the fan page of Aberry. But but like I I am usually the butt of the jokes. That's not true. It is not. We all pretty much share share the burden of being the the one poked fun of. It's just Aberry's getting it right here at the beginning of this because those are. Some of the more familiar and funnier stories of, of playing video games. Well, here's one on Casey then. We were playing, was it Fable 2 or 3? It was 2. No, Fable, it was, I think it was 3. Well, anyway, it doesn't really matter. One of the Fables. And Casey had worked really hard on this character. 
Casey had been very moral in the game. Very devout. Very, you know, he had, he had married this this character, this girl, whatever. You know, in Fable, you marry a non-playable character, uh, you know, and have kids and all that entails. And uh, Casey had gone, and he was showing us this game, and he said, you can get STDs. And he said, see, I don't have any. And he pulled up the chart that shows, and he did have an STD. And he said, I've literally only had anything to do with this wife character. And we were saying, well, you need to go confront her about it. And obviously, you know, you can't speak what you might want to. But he pulled out his gun and pointed it at her. And we said, Casey, fire a warning shot across her head, over her head. And he did. And uh, he shot her head clean off of, uh, <laughs> off of her shoulders. It was really kind of intense. <laughs> but anyway. No, no, that was the... First game in that series where they was like, you can actually marry and have sex with somebody in the game. Mm -hmm. and like, you, it was no nudity, you know, you didn't see any of that. Right. And so Casey's like, yeah, watch it. And he marries this woman, does that, and then ends up getting an STD. So the assumption is that she cheated on him. Yeah. Yeah. And so Casey does what Casey did and shoots her head off and then goes, <laughs> I'm going to go find a new one. <laughs> But then, too, an interesting part of that game is at the end of the main quest, the villain is monologuing, and he's just you're standing in like on this platform, you remember, and he's just talking about, "I'll destroy you" and all this kind of stuff. And Abery, I think Abery discovered it. Might have been James. Might I don't remember. No, Casey was playing. I said, "Why don't you just shoot him? Let's see what happens." <laughs> and you can. And Casey shot him in the head. <laughs> and, like, like, the boss fight that was supposed to go on, like, I think Casey beat the game once and made it back to it, and he was like, the boss fight is forever. Like, he, the guy has, like, three re like, the normal, then he, like, mutates, and then mutates again. And, like, we were saying that in the monologue is just going, we just go, God, just shoot the guy, let's see what happens. <laughs> and one, one bullet, the guy drops, the game's over. <laughs> and it's like, what? So I remember being having to go to work the next morning and being in Casey's parents' basement way too late playing video games. James, remind me about uh, Megaton. Okay, so the, the incident you're talking about. So in Fallout 3, you come out of the vault and you encounter the first town you make it to is called Megaton because there is a, a bomb, an A-bomb, literally in the center of town. And these people have built a little civilization around this A-bomb. So you can wander around the wasteland and you can find like the ritzy people who are in like this really nice penthouse hotel. And one of the guys is like, hey, you want to do me a favor and go destroy Megaton by <laughs> reactivating the bomb and everything? So we all kind of debated on it for like half a second. Like, yeah, this sounds fun because Casey had already played like most of the game and skipped the Megaton like bombing run like section. And I was like, I don't really care about this character. Let's go do it. So we go and do it, like set everything up, and then they legit nuke um, Megaton. Just wipes it off the the like face of the earth here in uh, Fallout 3. And after that point, we were like, our character's probably really like grief stricken. So we completely abandon the quest, abandon everything, and we just go around robbing people for alcohol to uh, make our character into a drunken stupor for killing an entire <laughs> town with an A-bomb. So. Well, I would think that would really give you some some problems, some emotional problems, if you blew up a town with a, you know, with an atomic bomb. So it was another very realistic uh, interpretation. Uh, now, one thing I remember, I used to be for a little bit. I used to be into Japanese RPGs, and we went to GameStop one time, and I bought. Uh, Dynasty Warrior? No, uh, Star Ocean or something like that. Some, uh, oh, uh, I don't remember. In any case, I was really excited. We went to Casey's basement because that's what a lot of these adventures happened in Casey's basement. But we went and uh, they made fun of my game so relentlessly that I, I never played it again. <laughs> and I sold it. It was it really was was life changing for me. I think that was the final, except for Final Fantasy, that was the last Japanese RPG game I ever played. No, no. See, we all had you know Xboxes and Playstations and our normal houses where like we could play anytime we wanted to. But like Casey had the house with a good basement that 
We wouldn't disturb anybody. Because what we did was disturbing. Yes. <laughs> we would uh, create, on the wrestling games, we would create the worst possible creator wrestler characters you can imagine. I will not go into a lot of detail on what we did. Well, I think, I think most guys. of the wrestling stuff happened at like my and James's house right. or at your house. Uh, I remember playing uh, Assassin's Creed at your house. Uh huh. And uh, Assassin's Creed had this default function. If you kill too many innocent people, <laughs> it would reset the game. And so, so we was we was doing the old you know the old favorite thing of who could kill the most gods in this one town, and who had the most creative uh, assassination. And so I, it was my turn. I, I was doing well, and I, I hid, and I had this big row of gods walking across, like a, in front of this hay bale that you could jump off of. So I ran up the hay bale real cool, jumped off, <laughs> was about to spike one of the gods, and like the game like shifted me, <laughs> and I impaled a like an elderly woman, a woman, yeah, right the game, in the head. And the game was like. You have killed too many innocents. <laughs> I forgot it's about that. Reset. That was hilarious because it was so. It looked from the point of view of just watching Abery do this. It looked so heartless. <laughs> but he was aiming for this guard. But literally, it was like the guard was here and the woman was here, and it was like, no, nope, you killed the woman. <laughs> yeah, that one was an awesome one. Now, speaking of wrestling games, one thing that we all used to enjoy doing is we we played we would play cruiserweights. Uh, in like uh, Hell in a Cell matches or Elimination Chamber matches, and the versus super heavyweights. Right. So would the would all four of us do it, or would it only be two at a time? It'd only be two at a time. Two at a time. So we would select like Rey Mysterio or Eddie Guerrero, and then uh, we would have the Big Show, Mark Henry, Viscera, Viscera. <laughs> yeah, this this was Kane. SmackDown versus Raw 2008, I guess, or something like yeah, that. 2008, 2009, they actually had like weight detection on where like cruiserweights couldn't pick up super heavyweights or anything like that. So we would have, I think, the cruiserweights at the time were Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, uh, Kidman, uh, Kid Cash, Kid Cash, um, Tyson, Yo Tyson Kid, Mockery. Uh, and Mercury, I think. Um, but no, you know, we, we had, we had super heavyweights in the in the chambers, and everything was all just like a random draw. So if both of the player characters, so if me and Andrew were playing, and our characters started in the ring together, we would just immediately go and climb on top of the chambers and just wait so for the great. first and do super taunts, heavyweight yeah. to, to come out. We would taunt because that's how you built your special. Um, so when the super heavyweights came out, we had like maybe a fighting chance to be able to do something. And one of the best things that ever happened in it was Viscera was like beating one of us to an absolute pulp. I think and then all of a sudden that. just stops and turns and just pans and looks outside of the chamber. And just like like Viscera wants hot dog <laughs> and then comes back to like beating us up. And one of the funny things is, is that actually happened in a like real life WWE match one of the uh, bigger guys just all of a sudden stopped what he was doing and turned and like looked into the crowd like for a hot dog vendor and then turned back and went back to doing uh, whatever he was doing or whoever he was beating up. Uh, it was a real challenge because we would set it on the maximum difficulty setting and do this exhibition match in the, in the Hell in a Cell and just try to survive it and you, you, could, you could really sabotage the other person <laughs> by like Wait, like why they was trying to dodge one of the super heavyweights? You led another one over to him because I think I think it was me and you was me and James was playing, and uh, Mark Henry was chasing me, and uh, like he he disappeared from t chasing me, like he just turned invisible for a second, and like James thought he was safe, went to the same side of Mark Henry. Mark Henry was like. Invisibility turned off. Like <laughs> picked up James and him with his finisher, which was so wild. I think Mark Henry on the game had been just so still. He sort of blended in with. The <laughs> it, it was it was so odd because like James James was like I'm safe. Like because he was getting beat. He was. He was I had just, I had just like escaped from like Kane and the Big Show beating me up and was like finally a minute of rest. I'm, I'm so <laughs> glad. And then all of a sudden. Mark Henry out of nowhere hits me with with his slam, and I'm like, I'm dead now. This is super. <laughs> like, like I, I had I had a choice of 
Just let James get pinned and run yeah, the ring. Or try to save him and help him out. But no, Avery, I believe no, no, I helped you. me. You tried to help me out, and like, but Big Show <laughs> intercepted you. And I ended up getting beat, and then you get pinned by the Big Show shortly after that. And, and it, it just was something fun to do because, like, being like Rey Mysterio and hitting like a 619 on the, like the Big Show and then going for a pin, and like, it was like the other Cruiserweight guy would try to distract the other one so you could get him out but like you would have to hit them with like four finishing moves I mean, that's as long as your finisher didn't involve lifting them because you were never going to do that when they got that weight detection <laughs> put who, in who there was it? Who had, I think it was Muckery had like a lifting finishing move and it's like if you play as him, you can never finish him. You had to be like Rey Mysterio or somebody with like you could do Eddie Guerrero with the uh, uh, yeah. yeah or the what was his submission the lasso from El Paso, but you had to do so much damage to get <laughs> to get a submission. There was no way you were getting a submission. And it was uh, now that was a fun one. Uh, oh, I, I had thought of one that we used to play a lot. Was it the X Men? Well, no. It was, well, bringing back to uh, uh, the last podcast we did when we talked about Mortal Kombat, <laughs> we uh, we all got, back in 2020, or oh, 2000, what was it, 2012? 2012 to 2020 is a big, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you get those two years like, well, confused. I, it, it was 2012 because uh, L.A. Noir just came out, right? 2012 was that when LA Noir came out? For the LA Noir came out like 2010 ish, I think. Um, somewhere in there. Where are we? Where are you going with this? Well, that was the time that we was all trying to work out and get into shape. And uh, the gym we went to was in the local college. LA Noir came out in 2011, just for context. All right. And so, so we would go to the gym and work out some. Well, one time we was taking a break to get water and we actually rounded into like a state of the art projection room with sound system. Yeah, state of the art projection room. There was a projector, a white wall, and a sheet. That was the <laughs> Oh state no, of the no, art no, it was good be, because it had the integrated sound system that we plugged into so we could listen to the Mortal Kombat. This Mortal Kombat X also in twenty eleven. Yep. Yes, thank you. And so for my birthday, I ended up buying Mortal Kombat X. And one of the favorite things to do in that was the X-ray moves. <laughs> and so we would go, we would say we was going to work out. We would pack up the Xbox, Xbox, drive to the gym, walk in and take a shop left. <laughs> Away from the gym. <laughs> go in and play Mortal Kombat. Uh, some of us on the podcast are not in as great shape as others in the podcast. <laughs> Some of us, their jobs require a certain level of physical <laughs> prowess that the rest of us don't. What I'm getting at here is James is a male stripper. All right, but I thought we weren't going to talk about any of that, so <laughs> we're going to gloss over that. Um, he does the... Other, other stuff, um, other uh, times where video games have, uh, have pretty much almost ruined our lives uh, successfully... Um, I remember having to study for like a big economics class and one of the hardest economics uh, professors um, was the teacher and everything. And I believe it was the final is, is what it was. And I hadn't done stellar in the class, so I kind of needed a good grade. So I'm like studying on it and everything. And I get a phone call from Casey and Andrew like, hey, come over to Casey's. We're going to play some video games and everything. And Against my better judgment, I was like, all right, I'll come. It's like early in the afternoon. We'll play some. And then I'll like, I'll leave around 10 or 11, go home, study, sleep a little bit and, and go in for the test. Cause it was like eight in the morning was, was my test time. So, uh, get over to Casey's. We start playing video games. Um, long story short, my alarm goes off at like 7.30. <laughs> For this eight o'clock exam, I have zero time to study or anything like that. I rush from Casey's house to campus and sit in class and take the test and somehow miraculously pass the class with a with a 
a, a good score. I think it was like a B was my final in that class. So worked out well. I mean, play we, some video games. Don't learn economics. It, it's all you know. We don't recommend that. We, um, we don't <laughs> recommend. Why have we say again? Like we said on the last <clears throat> um, episode of the podcast, don't follow our collegiate advice because we uh, we were on the you know the doctor route of six seven years of college just for the undergrad. <laughs> I mean, you know, we told this story at the last one on the last episode, but I would uh, I would skip class a lot to go and play video games with James and I remember I can remember the first time it happened I don't think we told this on the last one but the first time it happened James called me and said we got Smackdown versus Raw uh, it was one of I don't remember which one but it was it was the first one where Ric Flair actually wooed in his entrance right so I, I don't know what year that was but I can remember because that blew my mind <laughs> and we stayed and played we played Guitar Hero we played SmackDown versus Raw, and then as we talked about last time, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks we played, and I mean, video games can mess with you. Well, I, I remember James. James had to have uh, ACL surgery back when he was in college, and so he needed a person to drive him to his classes. So I was taking online classes at the time, so I had free time to do this, and uh, and I I would say. Because James would sleep most of the day before his classes, so I would end up playing video games. I would play uh, 2K, whatever the basketball game was then. And uh, I, I created a OP three-point shooter and would just drain threes. And I think one of my biggest scores was like 200 points by myself. <laughs> because like I just shot threes and would never miss. And like... It, Video games can be fun. Do not overdo video games. <laughs> so, so from my time of ACL surgery, recovery, and everything, the reason why I would sleep so much is because I was taking my like pain medication and everything um, for my for my knee. And most of the time, all I would remember is I would be laid up on the couch. Avery would be playing video games. Casey would come home. Because uh, it was at the time me and Casey were living together, and Avery would start making jokes at Casey's expense. I would, you know, fall asleep, pass out, whatever. Wake up a couple of hours later. Avery is still continuously making jokes at Casey's expense. Casey's just sitting there laughing, and they're playing some video game. <laughs> this went on for like three weeks before I was able to be cleared to drive again. We, you know, and it wasn't always cooperating either. There was, you know, for you kids, uh, before you were able to download video games off the internet, we had video game rentals in the same way that you had movie rentals. And I can remember competing with these guys because typically I think what we would all do is on Saturday, we would get to rent a video game or a movie and kept it till Monday. So I know for my part, if I'd had a good, a good week and had behaved and, and fulfilled whatever responsibilities I may have had, that I was able to rent a video game on Saturday. So uh, the challenge in that, the video game I always wanted to rent was Super Nintendo. Uh, it was The Adventures of Batman and Robin based on the animated series of the same name. And these guys, James Nabry and Casey and me, that's the game we wanted most of the time. So the challenge was to get to our local uh, video rental store to pick up the Adventures of Batman and Robin before the other guys. So, you know, and I don't think we even were aware that we were <laughs> competing until years later. But, you know, the video games can be uh, can be like that, too, where, you know, it's competitive. Now, superhero video games bring up a whole different a whole different thing. One of my favorite video game memories with the Horseman is we were at Casey and James's apartment, and Avery, you may have come out for your birthday. So we might actually be coming up on the anniversary of this. No, no, this was when we did the. Are you talking about the X Men? Yeah, that was actually New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, okay. And we got man, we got some good New Year's Eve stories too that we can tell. Woo. But uh, <laughs> but so in this particular New Year's Eve, we were playing um, the old arcade X Men game. 
Uh, it's, Casey had put on uh, his jailbroke Xbox. Very legally well, had done we this. We were also playing, you know, like Battle Toads and Turtles in Time. <laughs> yeah, we we done a lot. We were playing Sunset Riders. <laughs> Sunset there. Riders, Sun man. Oh, we got a story about that one. Yeah, for sure. But we were playing this X Men game, and the first boss that you come to is the X Men villain Pyro, and uh, it's kind of like the Fable boss where you could shoot him. Uh, Pyro goes into this, I will destroy you kind of talk, you know, and somebody punched him and he went down. So then we all ran over to him and started wailing on him. It looked like we had absolutely jumped him as a gang and we're just beating the crap at him. He did not last long. It was hilarious. It was so funny. Once we, once we realized that you could do that to Pyro, we did it to every other (laughs) boss because there was a boss at the end of each stage in this game. So as soon as we learned we could do that with Pyro, it was like speed run haven. It was like, let's see how quick we can beat the game because we're just going to jump everybody like we're in like a backstreet game. Oh, uh, we took out the White Queen. We took out the Blob. I think I think we probably had trouble doing it with Magneto. But I think most every other boss, we were able to jump. Well, well you saved up your special. Like, you know, you, you knew that you could do it. It was like, once we got, when, once we hit Pyro, like, we didn't have specials, so like as we was beating him up, we charged all the way up. So we all like went in tons, like hitting him with the thing. His, we just watched his uh, health bar <laughs> melt, and we go, "Wait, we can do this!" <laughs> and so like the blob was the next one, and like we just bum rushed him. That's and, awesome. You know, and, and just by him with. It, we destroyed all those characters real fast. It was awesome. It was great. So that was that was a cool time when we found out how to get all those games loaded onto the. We played Rescue. Do you remember Rescue from the Nintendo Entertainment System? Rescue. Do you remember that much, Avery? Hey, That's the one where you got uh, Sky Dog. Three different. You got no. You got your three different like levels. You're trying to infl- infiltrate a building where there's a hostage situation going on. So you got to like sneak oh, yeah, across the road to get your sniper guy in place so you can shoot out. Um, the window, the so music your goes. Can repel down and like make it in. The music goes dun 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 dun. dun. That was an old Nintendo Entertainment System game that uh, we, at my family, had had and played, and it was always so hard. And then when we got it on Casey's Xbox, it was easy. It was no, it was. It's, it's still, still hard. hard. I mean, it's a hard game, but. It, it was a lot of fun. Okay, okay. Since we were talking about hard games, what was that one that you had to be the pilot? Pilot, and uh, was it? It was called Pilot, wasn't it? Pi- pilot Wing is that what? Yeah, the one where you had to like get the good score to upgrade as you go up. Yeah, and that, that game was that game was so weird because the first level you start out as like a light plane pilot. Yeah, and skydiving. Yeah. And if you scored enough, you got your like class A pilot license and got to move on to level two where you had uh jet plane, pack. jetpack, and skydiving again. If you got and passed all of that, you moved on to level three, which was the plane, skydiving, uh hang glider, and jetpack. And once you passed all that, you kind of just went on and they progressively got a little bit more. But when you got to like level six, you were flying an Apache helicopter into like a war zone. Like it was all of a sudden like, congratulations, welcome to war. Here you go. <laughs> My favorite. They didn't teach you how to fly the helicopter, shoot it, like shoot guns or anything like that. But I'm fairly certain I know what you're about to talk about. One of the favorite things to do was to just go up with the skydiver and free fall as fast as you could into the pavement or into the ground or whatever because it would leave a little black silhouette um, of like an empty point and sometimes there would be like a couple of like little eyeballs that would blink at you after <laughs> after it happened no, so the, the my favorite thing was there's the, the main point of it was you went out and you had to hit the suckles and land on the moving tank. And uh, the worst thing was about it is like, if you wasn't controlling the parachute, the parachute would like take you way off. 
and we would see how far we could go off and come back and still land. Oh yeah. I remember the parachute and as soon as you like made an adjustment on the parachute, it went whoosh, whoosh, like you're skiing through the air or something. <laughs> it, was just, it was the weirdest thing. There's some good ones, man. I remember, um, this is awful, but do you remember it was on Casey's? No, I won't, you know, I don't want to tell that one. That one's not really suitable, but Star Fox is suitable and awesome. And, you know, do a barrel roll is, has been a, a big thing, you know, in geekdom or whatever you want to call it. People who play video games, everyone knows do a barrel roll. But um, wasn't there something, James, you were playing one time and wasn't there a Star Fox story? Maybe not. Maybe I'm... I was I was playing some like fighting game or something like that. And I was I was getting pretty well beat up because I couldn't make it through like a certain section and all of a sudden Casey's like do a barrel roll and that's, like, that's right. dumb and like I like made my character roll and I rolled out of the way of like an attack and it opened up like a vantage point where I could beat the guy I was, uh, <laughs> I was getting my butt kicked by and uh, yeah that, that was it right there fun aside you can if you google search on a desktop do a barrel roll it uh, well on google yeah, that's what I said on, on Google search. It it rotates the screen around like a barrel roll. You can try that at home. Well, well speaking about video games, and, and this, this might tell you how old we are, uh, one of our, our video place rentals, where you could rent a system. And so every Friday, me and James would go there, and we would rent a Nintendo 64. And we'll play like Diddy, Diddy Kong's Racing. And, oh, that's a good one. Uh, Star Wars. <laughs> but that was because uh, one of our friends had 64 and we could play all those when we went to his house. But when we was at our house, we couldn't. So we found this place that would let us. Uh, but that, that also reminds me of a story about uh, old NES games. One of our place uh, kicked us out because we ran uh, Gladiators and got to where well, we was going to go play it, opened up the case and it looked like somebody took a kitchen knife to it. <laughs> slash, like, like cut the back of the box. Wow. Like, like of the cartridge. And, and so we tried to play it and we would get to like a sudden level and it was like uh, game corrupted. And so we took it back and we was like, something's wrong with your game. And like, this was a place that we would go in and we would rent old school wrestling move like, like uh, shows. Old, like original like house shows like Royal Rumble 93 like those kind of stuff. We were loyal customers and had, had been going to this movie rental uh, business for years. And the person behind the counter looks at it and goes, you guys damaged this game. You're banned for life. And like, kicked us out. <laughs> we never went back. Wow. They're, uh, they're closed now. It's just a vacant, a vacant building. Well, you know, so. I mean, they're all closed now, I think. I don't think there's a single... Oh, no, I don't think so. Rent, I mean, because you do them online, right? You can... It's crazy. Well, you the can, stuff you you can, can do... Uh, Redbox has it. You can yeah, it. Redbox too. But I, I don't think Redbox will be around much longer. No. I don't you think know, so. But it's... But, one but, of my favorites was... Um, Aladdin, you remember the the Super oh, NES God. Aladdin game? James loved that. Yeah, I love, love it. You, you can still have fun with Aladdin. My... So... My mom still has the Super NES system, and it still works. It'll play Aladdin, and it'll play The Adventures of Batman and Robin. My nieces and nephew um, have played Aladdin as much as I have, and Super Mario Brothers and all this kind of stuff. It's, you know, it's just a cool thing. The cool thing to be able to do is, you know, have that generational stuff where I can connect with my nieces and nephew that way too. It's it's awesome. Well, see, what was what's that system we bought? The little one. Oh, like the remade? Yeah, the remade. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the remade uh, Super Nintendo. I got the PlayStation 1 in the remake. Can you do the same thing as you could do on the other one? You can't. They uh, they set up the PlayStation 1 different. But, I mean, the PlayStation 1 has got some, like, fantastic games on there. And I only got the PlayStation uh, mini console for being able to play Metal Gear Solid. I absolutely love the Metal Gear Solid series. I'm not a huge fan of the way Metal Gear Solid 5 was rushed and went through production and everything, but that's a completely different side story and a rabbit trail to, 
to go down. But the first Metal Gear Solid With is, Sniper is Wolf. fantastic. Yeah, the Sniper Wolf stuff, just everything Bravely. about it. Showing up, like making it through the docks, getting to the uh, to the top, seeing the Hind D, wondering why it's there, taking on Falcon Raven, Psycho Manus, the whole thing. Like, I still remember playing through the first time, getting the Psycho Manus and seeing like him read the memory card on uh, on the game, him vibrating the controller and just knowing everything you were gonna do and trying to figure out like a little like trick to, to beat the game. And then finally like Campbell tells you, switch the ports and then you switch your controller from port one to port two and you're able to beat Psycho Mantis. That like, I've never played any video game that was like that. So fourth wall breaking. Yeah. I, I remember, I remember it came on a demo disc with the PlayStation. And you could play it, you could play Tomb Raider, and something else. Cool, uh, cool borders. Oh, yes. And uh, me and James used to play Metal Gear, Gear, oh, goodness, Gear, to just see who would get caught first. <laughs> and then we used to play Tomb Raider to see who would get ate by the alligator first. <laughs> and then Cool Running or Cool Borders was just to see who could land the biggest trick. Well, so I have a question then. Um, there are games, obviously, that are all-time classics like Metal Gear. I've never played, believe it or not, never played Metal Gear. But there are games that are all-time classics like that. And then there are games that are pretty well that people hate, you know, that never really made it. So what I want to know, and I'll, I'll answer first to give you guys some time to, to give it some thought. I want to know what is your favorite game that you loved that never really took off? Now, for me, I've got two. Alpha Protocol... Which was, which was so much fun. I loved Alpha Protocol, which is kind of an espionage game where you had to make a lot of choices in the game and they changed kind of the way you played. I love that. Is that the one that I... I think you picked up before me, but I, I beat it before you and yes. I learned some of the tricks. Yes. Because you could flood with the Russian. Yeah, you, yeah, when you're being interrogated, yeah. yeah. But it's just cool. All the dialogue, you know, everything you do matters. The characters uh, interact with you differently based on how you talk to them. And that's the first time I remember something like that. The other one that I really liked was a sci-fi game. And it wasn't great. I really liked the the uh, concept of it. It was Advent Rising. It was kind of cool. But it was, um, you know, it was more or less broken in a lot of ways. <laughs> but it was it was a good concept. But that's that's those are my favorites that were sort of not well received. But that uh, that I really enjoyed. Well, one, one of my favorite ones that I think everybody hated was uh, was Battletoads for the NES. Because that was the first, you know, you got the 3D and the big pigs. And, because you didn't have enough lives. Yeah. And uh, and you, then you get to the hoverboard thing and you would start, you know, going down and have to dodge the bees and the lasers. And I just, I just always loved that because, I mean, heck. You could kick a pig with a normal foot and then it would grow two sizes to kick the other one or then it would turn into a big boot. <laughs> um, I, everybody, everybody just doesn't like that one, but that one just was a nostalgia thing. I just... Um, like Earthworm Jim. I mean, Earthworm Jim is another one that's out there. It's like yeah. way out there. But it's, it's a lot of fun. Earthworm Jim is a great one. And... Uh, a game that I played that I wish was like a bigger, you know, more like took off. I'm trying to think. Uh, it was, again, like James, we, we played some odd stuff. <laughs> uh, like, I, I remember picking up Red Dead Redemption, the first game. And, Red Dead Revolver. Well, Red Dead Revolver. Yeah. Was, and playing it and was like, oh my God, this is awesome. And what was it six years before red dead redemption came out probably yeah it was a long time and like everybody's like dude that won't ever take off because it's a western game and you you know and it's like no nah, it's awesome and that that one i think is a success story that could have very easily been one of those weird games that just didn't take off because like you said it was so much time between sequels mm -hmm. if a game is successful i think a sequel is announced you know fairly quickly kind of like a movie i don't think you know but that's so much time between then that that's another one that could have been like that 
I mean, like, so some of the games that, that I'm sure neither one of you guys have played, but they've got, they have a cult following um, and are, are fun games, but they're, they're odd games. Um, one that comes to mind, I was talking about it earlier this week with a work colleague, uh, Papers, Please. So you play a uh, border agent and you have to check passports at a checkpoint. Your country is finally allowing people to come in to the border um, and every day that you show up, there's new rules and regulations that you have to follow. And it just continues to escalate because you start out with like $20 and then you get paid for every person you allow through the border and you have to pay for heat and food and you got to take care of your family and stuff. And it's a, it's a very odd game in the, in the sense that it makes you think a little bit more about like the psychological stuff and it makes you relate more to like current cultural like instances that are, that is going on. Um, because you have people who rush the border at one point, if you get far enough into the game, they give you a trank gun to shoot people who are rushing the border and then that trank gun becomes a real gun and then are you going to shoot this person who is fleeing to your country you don't know if they're here for like terrorist activities or not because there are scenes where there are bombs thrown at the border people rush the border people uh show up and shoot the border from inside your country so it it it's very uh Psycho, psychological, like, I mean, it makes you think Yeah. Um, what it is. So. There's one weird one that, that I've never played, but has seemed like, like an interesting concept, but I never, ever want to play it. So Penn and Teller, the magicians, you know, put out, it's a video game that has several mini games in it. And one of them, it's literally, you drive a bus uh, from one real city on a map to another real city on the map. And it, obviously the route is predetermined and everything. And it's like a straight road, but the bus pulls to one side or the other. So you can't just set it and let it go and go do something else. It's in real time. It takes you hours to drive from one, from, you know, the whole map. And it, uh, at the end of it, I'm pretty sure there's no prize, nothing at all. You've just done it. That's it. You, you've just done it. So that one has always seemed interesting in a way that I never, ever want to touch it, but it, it's, I can't believe they did it, and I can't believe people have actually, you know, bought it. Like, that was crazy. But an all-time classic that we definitely have to talk about is, because we all, well, hey, but I don't know if you played it or not in elementary school, but James and I definitely did on the old computers. I'm talking the Oregon Trail, you know, just, just a masterpiece of video game storytelling. Yes, yes, I have died to dig, you know. Of dysentery? <laughs> I have died by mauling and bears. I did push the wagon through the flooded. You yeah. forded the river, you brave son of a gun, you. The, the, the best part of that whole game was being able to go hunting. Hunting, hunting was the best part of the game, so it, I was a terrible Oregon Trail player. Because I would do everything that you were supposed to and try to make everything last the way it was supposed to. But the moment I got dysentery, I said, screw it. I went and just wasted all the ammo, shot everything, never collected anything. And... Uh, Pretty much was like, well, I'm dying. All of you suckers that are stuck on this wagon with me are going to die too. So. <laughs> I, I don't think any of us made it too old. No, I never did. No, it was, not that I remember. And James and I played it, I mean, you know, in school. Like it was part of learning how to use computers. They used Oregon Trail as a teaching yeah, tool. Yeah, me too. You too? Me well, too. you're younger than us, so I have to... I'm, I'm only two years. Still though, you know, technology progressed quickly uh, in those days. Okay. This this might this might blow your minds. One of the weirdest games I played was on the Nintendo VR headset. Nice. Do you remember that, Seth? Mm -hmm. the, virtu the, the Virtual, virtual boy. boy. I got I got it for my birthday. Blame my, I blame my vision impairment for this. <laughs> me, me too. Uh, Wallio's Wall. Yes. Yes, that was a fun game. That was a great game. I love the, uh, the Virtual Boy boxing. Was, uh, was yeah, a game I, mean, I enjoyed a lot. Well, so tell me this as we wrap up because we're we're about out of time. But as we wrap up, 
Is there a game that's coming up that hasn't been released yet or that you've not got to play yet that you're really looking forward to? Because we all, we all still play. You know, not as much <laughs> now that we're adults. But we all do. We've got that adult money, though, so we all do still play. We'll do other things with our adult money that is <laughs> flipping on the child's child. Well, I know you both are excited for maybe the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Yeah, I forget the name of it. I can't but, remember the name of it either. But it's it in the Go same ahead. vein as... Uh, Turtles in Time, yeah, which is hands down one of the best video games ever. Y yes. Now I kind of wish the graphics would. I, I don't know if you remember Casey downloaded the uh, fighting game for the Xbox for the Turtles. Yeah, um, and the graphics really have not changed. But I think that's part of the part of the charm of it. It's it's Shredder's Revenge, by the way, coming out later this year. Yeah, I, I know, but it, it just you know when you play on. Like a PlayStation 5, which is 4K, and you kind of would hope a little bit it's the boxy graphics kind of do. I mean, it's going to be the nostalgic thing. That's, yeah. That's what they're going for there. Um, James, what about you? What are you looking forward to playing next? Uh, next upcoming game that I'm looking forward to playing, probably uh, God of War Ragnarok. Nice. Follow up to uh, the 2016 God of War. That was. Um, Hands down, probably one of the best. I like where they took the story because I played all of the first God of Wars um, that came out and was interested to see where the storyline would go. And I liked where they took it in the in the 2016 God of War. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to uh, Ragnarok. Well, speaking about that, that was the first game that they switched Kratos from being like a side scroll kind of deal yeah. to over the shoulder. I enjoyed the seamless, no loads, um, yeah. no load screens. Everything was just one continuous shot. It was very um, interactive. I was uh, on quarantine and replayed God of War and that was, that was pretty much my, my whole uh, two weeks was watching that, playing that um, and enjoying it. Um, Close to uh, getting a platinum trophy in it. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I bought a PlayStation 2 basically because we had played God of War and Guitar Hero at y'all's house. And I wanted to play that more. So that's why I got a PlayStation 2. It was for God of War. Well, but That's why I got a Xbox One. Or, well, no, what was Xbox 360 was for, God of, uh, for Gears of War. Yeah. So my the one I'm looking forward to that's coming out is a cheat because it's a remake. But... The Mass Effect trilogy is being remade. I'm a huge Mass Effect fan. I love those games. I'm really excited for that. I pre-ordered. I've not pre-ordered a game in I don't know how long. All but your I've choices mean nothing. I think that they're updating the ending too. Oh, well, that'd be good. To make that different. Because yeah, you're right. The, the original the ending. Kind of just oh, I didn't play that. But you're right. The endings were basically which color filter do you want over your <laughs> over your ending. But I think they've changed that some and made that. Because they listened to that com those complaints okay. for a long time. I mean, I remember you and Casey being so excited about Mass Effect, and I didn't really get into to Mass Effect. But from watching you guys, it, it always reminded me of Knights of the Old Republic. Definitely. Which, if they ever made a remaster version of Knights of the Old Republic, that would sell probably pretty quick. Definitely. And that one right there was one of the best, like story-driven. RPGs that I've ever played. It was a beautiful um, game. I agree completely. And then in, in the same vein of that, they had like Jade Empire, I think is what it was called. Same people who did uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Um, pretty pretty much almost the same storyline, um, but it it was it was very good. Uh, both of those games. Yeah, great well, games. Speaking about something that Angie brought up before we end this conversation. Uh, is uh, pre-ordering video games. And I haven't pre-ordered video games since Arkham Knight. That's shocking to me. Abery used to pre-order the biggest version of well, every no, game no, he I could get. To, I used to just pre-order the game. And, uh, when and then, so, so what happened was, Avery, uh, Avery's probably not going to want to tell this story. No, but I, I, what, what happened was, we go to get the first Batman game, Batman Arkham. Well, we went to we went to pre-order it, and in it, 
they had this batarang that looked battle damaged and everything, big life size scale battle batarang, and everybody was like, "Oh, that's cool." So me and Andrew look at Aberry and pretty much just peer pressure him into spending an extra fifty dollars for a plastic batarang display by pretty much saying. Gonna get it? Gonna buy it? Gonna get it? Gonna buy it? Gonna get it? Gonna buy it? Gonna get it? <laughs> now, this is also in between Casey, because Casey was with us, and the nice woman behind the GameStop desk, we was having a conversation, and Casey going, she's into you. <laughs> she's into you, man. Pre-order. You can get a number when you pre-order. I was like, I... And then we were saying... Gonna get it? Gonna buy it? Gonna get it? Gonna buy it? And to, to be honest, in the box... Which I can't find my book no more. The book that broke down the size, the characters, the backstories, I don't know where it went, was that was the minus little thing with the Baron. So I now have in my possession the Baron, uh, the Dark Knight looking over the city that you got from Arkham City. Oh, yeah. I got the black mask with the TVs behind them that you got with Arkham Origins. Origins. And then I have the Dark Knight standing over Arkham City that you got from Arkham Knight. Knight. Because that Batman trilogy or that Batman whatever Quadrilogy. Or, yeah. Quadrilogy. Uh, was one of the best games I agree. Series I picked up from Rock Awesome City. games. But see Rocksteady always blows you away with games because they brought out Red Dead well, I mean, Redemption. Rocksteady did Batman, Arkham, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. They didn't do Origins. No, they didn't. Um, WB Montreal. Montreal did W did uh, Origins. And they're also the company that is doing uh, Gotham think, Knights. I think. And it's been delayed. It's been delayed and I don't think it's related to the Arkham series. I, I think it's a different timeline where Batman's dead, and I think Commissioner Gordon's dead too. And also, Barbara Gordon isn't Oracle; she's Batgirl in it. So yes. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's involved at all. And I think Damian Wayne might be Robin. No, I think it's. Is Tim it Tim Drake? Drake? Okay, it's uh, hard to. I think Jason Todd is Red Hood. Oh, you're right. You're right. And Nightwing is Grayson. Yeah. Well, this has been this has been great. This has been a lot of fun talking about video games and reminiscing on these stories, man. We've had a We've had some good times playing video games. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Sunset Riders. <laughs> That's Avery's endorsement right there. Well, thank you for joining us uh, on episode three of Chinwag with the Horseman. I'm Andrew. I'm Avery. I'm James. And go play some video games. But go to college too, or do what you're doing. Don't let it interfere with your job or your school no, or whatever. No. Keep it in. Keep it in good. <laughs> in. in uh, Game, game responsibility. Yes, game responsibly. I like it. Game responsibly. That's what we'll leave you with. Have a good night.